Good morning. You know what we're going to do today? We're going to paint some miniatures. Why? Because I am in the mood to paint miniatures. So, what I have here is the Warlord Games Epic Scale American Civil War. These are about 15 millimeters tall. Let's get in here, see if we can get a good look at them. They are really nicely detailed. They look really good. They're fun to paint. And, you know, this is part of the starter set that I got. And right now I am finishing up the Union Army. So I'm going to show you how I paint the Union Army start to finish, barring two steps. The first step will be I paint the entire sprue black. So the entire thing gets a coat of black base paint. Um, I just use a spray can for that. Then spraying at a 45 degree angle from the front and back. So 45 degrees. I use a gray, a base gray primer coat. What that does is it simulates some shadows. Okay, so, you simulate shadows, okay? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over this base coat with a thin layer of paint, and that will leave me some of those shadows and highlights already shining through. So, I'm going to paint this to what I call a uh, three-foot base so it looks good from three feet away, which is basically where you're going to be playing your war games. Um, I'll go ahead and list all the paints that I use in the description, but I'll also tell you what I'm using here. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Hang tight. The first color we're going to be using is Army Painter Crystal Blue. This is for the pants. So we're going to get a little bit of that and we're going to thin it down and you can either thin it down with the um, Army Painter mixing medium, which works nicely, or just a little bit of water. It's however you like to work. Make sure your paints are nicely shook up. Now, the cool thing about painting the way I'm about ready to show you is you get to start out messy and get more detailed as you go. So the first part we're going to paint are all of the pants. Okay. And basically we want to make sure that we get those areas covered in nice. And you want to keep the paint thin so it brushes on real smooth. And it will leave those highlights and dark areas. So wherever there's a dark area, the paint will dry just slightly darker. Wherever there's a light area, like on this thigh here, the paint will dry slightly lighter. That will give you some automatic highlights in your painting. I'm attempting to do this through a magnifying glass. Usually I wear a pair of uh, magnifying uh, a headset. Right now I'm trying to use a uh, magnifying lamp so that you guys can see what I'm doing and I can see what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> now if you like my work, please make sure to like and comment, subscribe, Hit the little bell icon so that you can uh, see all the good stuff. Not that I'm all that great, but hey, I'm having fun and I hope you are too. Now, like I said, you want to keep your paint good and thin. It's, it'll be a smoother brush on. If you need to make a second coat, you make a second coat. It's not that big a deal. I have to admit, I love wargaming. It's a lot of fun. 
And of course, part of the hobby is the models. And there we go. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to make sure I look down the row here and see if there's any spots that I might have missed on the inside or outside of the leg. Just to do a little bit coverage, make sure everything's good. And we're looking pretty good there. And that is the pants done. Next up, the tunic. Okay, move the angle of the camera a little bit so I can try and keep it from focusing on my big ass thumb. <laughs> and we can focus on the paint a little bit more. Uh, I apologize for that, that's okay though. We'll just keep going. So, for this, for this we will be using uh, Army Painter Deep Blue. This will be for the tunics and the hats, okay? So, same as before, what we want to do is we want to start with a nice thin paint. And this is where I'm talking about being sloppy. Doesn't matter, as long as your paint is nice and thin, doesn't matter if you get on some of these details. Okay, because we're going to come back through, and we're painting from bottom up. Okay, so as items are basically worn on these guys, the only place you need to be careful is down here by the, by the trousers. You don't want to paint over your trousers. But what I mean by the bottom up method is each item is worn on a level. So the pants are under the tunic. The tunic is under the uh, leather belts and bedroll. The leather belt and bed or the leather belt is under the bedroll and the bedroll is pretty much the last thing. Then I go in and I'll paint the faces and the muskets. That way, it doesn't matter if I accidentally cover up a leather strap here and there. Because I'm going to come back to it. And like I said, if I'm keeping my paints good and thin like this, then it won't matter. I won't lose any detail. That sort of stuff. And once again, the, reason I'm, the other reason I'm doing this is you will get the variation in the paint with the shadows and each person's uniform. Because you gotta remember, the uniforms were, you know, well, for lack of a better term, uniform. However, they all were in different states of wear. Also, during this part, try and make sure that you get back into these areas that are between the soldiers. That'll give you kind of a starting of a good deep shadow back there. So, all right. Moving up the line of what gets painted next, we're going to be using Army Painter Matte Black. And this is going to be for all of the leather straps and accoutrement. All right, and the brims of the cappies. Okay. 
and of course the boots and the base. So let's get to that for next. Now here's where I'm starting to get into the, the tight details. So I'm going to change over to my uh, insane detail brush. Your little tiny one. And what I like to do first is just do all the caps. I use the edge of my brush to catch that edge of the brim. And just like that, get those caps out of the way. And once again, if you mess up a little bit, don't worry. You can always go back and clean it up. There we go. Okay, all those caps are painted. Next. I'm going to start on... Now, I do this front. I do the front, then I do the back. I start and I look for all of the leather pieces. So there's a strap right there. Make sure your paint is smooth. You, know, you get a bit of water in there so it goes on nice and easy. Uh, paint the Bowie knife. Paint that up black. Because the leather at the time was dyed a deep black and that actually kept the uniforms, you know, just it, it kept it a good uniform color. It was easy to repair the color if it got worn so we got a strap going over the shoulder here now in a minute at the very end I'm going to go ahead and paint the weapon his sword black and his hat black okay so I'm just going to mark those like that so I don't forget because I do <laughs> all right this guy's got some sort of round case here let's paint that now we're going to come back here and paint the sword and hilt for our officer that basically gives the uh, gunmetal and silver colors that the metal colors that we're going to use a nice base they seem to really pop when their base is black then we're going to do his hat so there we are next step is the base now the base I, is fairly simple for me because I just slap it on there. Um, when I'm done basing these guys, you're not going to see much of their boots because they're, you know, they're trampling through grass and everything. So where their foot is raised up, I just make sure not to hit the trousers. Now, you see here where their boots are raised up. I just put a black line across the back where it's not. This one's distinguished because, you know, the cuff is out. But some of them are just a line where the boot is. And if you want to do, like, mass painting your armies, which is probably the easiest way to get these done, what I'll do is I will paint each color on each unit. So we'll do the pants first for every unit in the brigade, then the tunics, then the black, then the khaki, just working my way down. And the next color up is Vallejo model color khaki. I don't know what the army painter version of this is. I just don't happen to have it with my set. So we're going to go with the khaki. 
and this will be for, let's go ahead and flip it around so you can see it better, these bed rolls, these hats that are going to be different colors, and then I also use it to paint the skin of the drum. Okay, so what I generally do is I go to the back first. And this way I can make sure I get the ones on the front because sometimes it's really hard to see where they are. So this guy has one and we're going to just paint it nice and even. Okay, and he had one. That's the other trick is if I can't see it, I can flip it over and go, there's one. So he up oh, there it is. Yes, I can see where it is now. Okay, and we'll get the hats. And it's funny because each step as you go along gets faster and faster because there's less and less to paint on each sprue. And the khaki is done. So, next up, we do the gun barrels, or the gun stocks. For that, we will use Army Painter Oak Brown. Now, the guns are pretty easy. What I generally do, now I like to keep the paint a little thicker and solid color. And what I'll generally do is I'll go across the top like this and I'm going to paint all the tops of the gun barrels pretty much right up to where they meet the cap or the body of the soldiers. Next, Flesh Tone. For this, I will be using Barbarian Flesh for a Marmy Painter. This, I just like the tone this brings out. Kind of that dusky bit under the sun. Now for this, I like to try, I don't want it too thin, but I really don't want it too thick. I want a nice flowing paint. For the main reason, there's a lot of I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of facial detail in these things. I mean, these guys have beards and mustaches and some of those mutton chop things that they did in the Civil War. So, I understand that this method of painting, you know, all of these details probably make it take longer, but I figure... If someone's gone to all the trouble to actually put these details in, I might as well paint them. We've got all the faces done. Now we get the hands. The hands are a lot easier. Um, basically, we just kind of blob on where the hands are. Okay, everything is dried. Now we're going to make them pop. We're going to use the Army Painter Quick Shade Dark Tone and a lot in a wide, soft brush. And then all we're going to do now is give them a good coat. This part looks scary. I know, I know it does. But what you're going to do is you're going to keep dabbing. And make sure that any, you know, it doesn't pool anywhere. Don't be afraid of using it. Now, you're going to notice that I did not paint the drum. That was on purpose. I'm going to get, I want the drum to be a little brighter. You know, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just do what we're doing now. 
I generally try to brush the downward stroke, kind of pulling all the tone down. I think we're looking pretty good. This is going to take a little bit of time to dry, so now you really need to leave it alone. However, if you want, these guys are now table ready. All you need to do is paint the uh, barrels of the guns and the um, sword and the drum. And you could go to the table just like this. Be all done and ready to go. But I take one more step. And that's my highlighting step. And we're going to, as soon as these things dry, we're going to go into that. Okay? So hold tight. There we go. Now our wash is all dry. You can see that these guys look pretty good. From three feet away, they're pretty good. They're good enough to play on the table. They look nice. They have some good detail to them. We're all set. However, I'm going one step further. Okay? What we're going to do is using War Painter mummy robes which is a little bit like an ivory-ish color i'm going to go back through all the steps of painting but i'm going to use a 50 50 mix so the pants will get a 50 50 mix of crystal blue and mummy robes and i'm just going to paint the highlighted areas the areas that would have sunlight Hitting them. Okay, so we are going to hit up any area that is higher or in the sun. So that would be the tops of each of their upraised legs, just like this. Shoop. And that's all it is, just a nice little. Go to the back. And basically, once again, any place that's highlighted out. So the tops of the calves, these cuffs. Here we go. So that is the highlights and the pants done. And now on to the tunics. Back to the fine brush. And basically just a little bit of edge color, a little bit on the top there, just to pick out a little bit of color, reflection, highlight. And now, we do the arms. Now, once again, on the end guys, I kind of put a little bit out here to the side. And what I generally do is I highlight the cuffs and the shoulders or anywhere that's standing, that's kind of moving forward. These folds that you might see in their uniform. Try to highlight those. There, just like that. Doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. And we go around to the back. The back is pretty easy. What I do is I just touch the shoulder maybe a little bit on the back and a cappy i give a little dab that's all we need there and there we go now next up is black 
But instead of doing a 50-50 black with the um, mummy robe and matte black, I use Necromancer Cloak. And that's what I use for the highlights on all the black pieces. So we just need a tiny bit of that. And what this is for is wherever leather might have a little bit of a shine because of light hitting it. So, and it's real easy to look for what you want on the front. Anywhere I have a knife, one of their bowies, I just kind of just give it a little touch to highlight it. Anywhere there's a canteen, I give it a little swipe like so. Uh, holsters, just get a little touch on the edge. That's really all there is to that. Now, I also highlight the brims of the caps. So I just go along, get a little bit of a brush along the edge of the caps, like that. Okay. Now, along to the back and we do the exact same thing so we're still looking good now we're back to the 50 50 mix this time with the khaki what we're going to do with that is we're going to highlight any of the tan hats and bedrolls so we're just gonna just a little bit and the bedrolls have these little rope bands on them so we can highlight those and that's the khaki all done now while I have that light highlighted khaki color, what I do next is the drum. So hang tight. Now for the drum, um, I've got model color burnt red from Vallejo. Again, I don't know what the um, army painter color would be for that, but it's a color that really works that I like for this use. So we just get a little tiny bit of that out. Now, basically, I'm gonna paint up that drum. Okay, now. That part painted, I go right back to that light khaki color, the 50 50. Maybe see if I can't work a little bit more mummy robes into it. And then, very carefully, I see if I can't get those ropes highlighted. There we go, much better. Now, there's only two steps, well, three steps left. Next, I use Army Painter Plate Metal, and this is for the gun barrels and the uh, triggers. There we go. All the barrels are painted. The next color I use is Greedy Gold Army Painter. Now all this is is for the brass accents on the um, uniform. 
I tried using brass and it kind of, it doesn't come out nearly as good as I'd like it to. So we're gonna, I found that the gold color really works better. And the only things you pick out here are the belt buckles and the chest plate piece. So there's a belt buckle, there's a belt buckle, and there's one. On the commander, we got his basket hilts. There we go. That is the unit completed. All set and ready to go. That's all it is, just a few steps, and that's how good they look. Now all that's left to do is add them to their unit and base them. Oh, and put their flags on. We'll get to the flags in just a moment. So let me let these dry, and we'll come back and finish them up completely. Okay, they're all dry, and I pulled them off their little wooden stick. So now, all I do is add a little bit of super glue to their base. Just a few drops. Now, I cut the pins off of these. Because um, I wasn't sure how I was going to want to paint them. And the next set I paint will uh, actually leave the pins on. But this does give you the option of slightly offsetting your lines to make them look a little more ragtag. So we just tack those guys on just like that. And there we go. Next up is the flags. Now... Warlord Games was kind enough to give you unit flags in paper, which are very nice. So we're going to do this one up as the 20th Infantry, 20th Indiana Infantry. Now, what they have, what they're doing is they're wrapping the flag around the flagpole. That's why you have this big gap in there. I don't like the way that looks. That's just me. I don't like that. So I attach them straight on. Now just using basic old Elmer's glue. Take the flag that I've folded and I just throw a little bit That's more than enough, but then we just spread it out with our fingers and close it over. Now, you can use super glue, that's fine, but there's a reason I use Elmer's glue. That'll become apparent in a minute. Okay, so. Once this is all tacky and it's holding, what I do is drop it. <laughs> so I get a marker, just a simple black permanent marker with a good chisel edge. And then I draw down that outside edge. That gets rid of those, that white. Right there. Okay, the other reason that I use the Elmer's glue is at this point, you can form the flag. So I'm gonna make it a little wavy and bendy, like so. And we're gonna let that dry, just like that. Let me set that aside. Well, both flags have been folded and molded. 
and left to dry. Now the only thing that's left is to attach them to the unit. So, the first thing we do is trim off trim off the extra on the back. And at this point, I also go through with my marker again and get rid of any white that I've spotted. There, that part's removed. I got a little bit of white right there. There we go. Now, what I do is I take my super glue. Not too much. And run a bead along that edge. That bead run along the edge, making sure I have the top of the flag. I basically attach it right to the pole. Just like that. That's all there is to it. Now, I'll admit these are not as secure as if they were looped around the pole, but I like the look that this gives much better than that loop. And what I can do later is go back with a tiny bit of extra super glue on an old brush and paint that really well along that edge. And there you go. One Union Command Unit, all finished. The last part we do is we go ahead and take care of the basing. Now we just have the basing to do. And what I do with the basing is I just take some white glue and paint it all along the base. Try to get as far down in between as you can, but make sure you don't get any paint on the figures. Now, I do this over paper. I just take my flock and Away we go. Just tap it off a little bit. And I usually wipe off the edges because I don't really want anything on the edges. So we let that sit for a minute. Let's go ahead and add a tiny bit of static grass. Now I don't have a static grass applicator, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically make a couple little tufts. So we're gonna get a dollop of glue. And I'm gonna say I want a tuft of grass right there. I'll grab my tweezers. Another one right there. 
And that's all there is to it. Now, of course, I know you realize why I'm using the paper. It's because once I'm done, I don't waste any. So there we are. One completed unit of Union Infantry. I hope you liked this little tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe and comment. Tell me what you'd like to see. All right. So, as always, keep on modeling and uh, have a great day. I'll see you later. Take it easy.